نمضي جنودا نجبول وهادي نمضي أسودا لا نخشال وغادي نمضي جنودا نمضي أسودا نمضي جنودا نمضي أسودا نمضي جنودا نجبول وهادي نمضي أسودا لا نخشال وغادي نمضي جنودا نجبول وهادي نمضي أسودا لا نخشال وغادي نمضي جنودا نمضي أسودا نمضي جنودا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل الله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا صلوات الله وسلامه عليه عبده ورسوله أما بعد All praise is due to Allah We praise him Seek his help And seek his forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our actions. Whomever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomever Allah leads astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no God or deity worthy of worship but Allah alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. And I bear witness that Jesus, peace be upon him, is his servant and messenger. And I bear witness that Moses, peace be upon him, is his servant and messenger. Brothers and sisters in Islam, please be patient with us tonight due to the microphone problem. Tonight's lecture is essential. Reason being is many Muslims are indulging and they have unfortunately been influenced by some of these magicians reading cups, reading palms, believing that some people know the unknown tonight's lecture is essential and we need to focus on this because many Muslims have been harmed and they have been tricked by many of those people who claim that they know the unknown and they have some type of gift today we would like to talk about another creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and they are called al-jinn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in al-quran وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ indeed I have created jinn and mankind only that we may worship Allah Jinn and mankind. The reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us is to worship Him alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear that human beings and the jinn have been created for that main purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The jinn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, that they have been created from baked clay. خلق الإنسان من صلصال كالفخار وخلق الجن من مارج من نار. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has created mankind from soil, from dirt, and He has created jinn from baked, from fire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear that the same purpose that we have been created for another creation they have been created for the same reason and they are called al-jinn. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said 
that the malaika have been created from nur, from light. And the jinn have been created from fire. Also the Prophet peace be upon him has said, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الجن ثلاثة أصناف منهم صنف لهم أجنحة يطيرون في الهواء وصنف حيات وعقارب وصنف يحلون ويضعنون The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said that there is three types of jinn one of them one type they do fly and the others they are they shape themselves in snakes and spiders and the others they reside in houses and we need to realize that the jinn as there is good mankind there is bad mankind the jinn are exactly the same the jinn are exactly the same there are some that are Muslims rebellious Muslims good Muslims and there are some that are Christians good Christians, good character and bad Christians as there is with human being so there is no difference between mankind and jinn the difference is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them a favor that he has not given us which they can see us and we can't see them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Al-Quran innahu as shaytan innahu yaraakum هو وقبيله من حيث لا ترونهم شيطان he sees you him and his tribe from a position that you can't see them so they can see us they could be present with us today they could be amongst us today inshallah good jinn and they are here for the same purpose as you are today to benefit by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يقول الشافعي رحمة الله تعالى عليه يقول من زعم أنه يرى الجن فأبطلنا شهادته إلا أن يكون نبيا الشافعي one of the greatest scholars رحمة الله عليه he has said whomever says that they have seen the jinn we have made him we, would don't, we don't accept him as a witness except if he's a prophet now we know that many people do see the jinn especially if they've been possessed or whatever they do see the jinn but they see them not in their original form because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that you will not see them you will see them in a different form they shape in spiders they shape in snakes they shape in human beings and many of those people who I've read on and they have been possessed they, she, they see them as short, long ears, bald and things like this they form themselves in that particular form but they, this is not their original form so Shafi Rahmatullahi Alayhi has made it clear that no one whomever claims that they can see the jinn in their original form that we don't accept them as a, as a witness. يقول المولى عز وجل يا معشر الإنس والجن ألم يأتكم رسل منكم يقصون عليكم آيات وينذرونكم لقاء يومكم هذا. Allah سبحانه وتعالى has said, or jinn and mankind, have you not been warned? when I have sent the messengers to you so they can warn you to that day this is the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address mankind and jinn telling them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent messengers to warn you about this particular day the day of judgment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that the jinn would say وَأَنَّا مِنَّا الصَّالِحُونَ وَمِنَّا دُونَ ذَلِكَ and the jinn would say that there are good that there are jinns, they are righteous and there are those who are rebellious and many of us believe that a shaitan he is from the malaika no a shaitan he is from the jinn and we all have read surah al-kahf as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said 
وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس كان من الجن كان من إيش من الجن and Allah سبحانه وتعالى when he said the angels prostrate to Adam they all prostrated except Iblis he was of the jinn now many people are confused about the jinn the jinn as I said previously they are like human beings there are good jinn and there are bad jinn but the bad jinn the disbelieved the disbelievers jinn we call them shayateen as sometimes if your son misbehaves you'd say to him sit down ya shaitan huh? or a person he's rebellious and he's a transgressor okay you'd say this person is a shaitan because of his behavior so the jinn are originally they Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them from fire and the ones who transgress and disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are shayateen now some people disbelieve that a jinn can enter inside a body they can possess a body let us at the moment begin with the book of Allah as we are Muslims whenever there's an argument and dispute in anything we have alhamdulillah the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Al-Quran فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرَدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ if you have an argument or dispute in anything, then take it back to Allah, the book of Allah, and Rasuli, and the messenger, the sunnah, salawatullahi wa salamu And keep this in mind, please. Whenever you have a dispute in anything, make sure that you take it back to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the understanding of the Sahaba. How do we understand the book of Allah? When we read and we find that the meaning of this verse of the Quran is as Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu has understood it and Umar and Abdullah ibn Abbas and Ali radiallahu an and the rest of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. If we hold on to this, we'll never go astray. Understand Islam according to the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. If each one of us, we give him a Quran today and we tell him, understand Quran the way you think or according your in, to your own intelligence, we will have a major problem. But we need to understand Quran as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understood it and also the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And why do we specifically say that always go back to the best of generations because first of all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them as he has said in Al-Quran Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah and Muhammad sallallahu has said خير القرون قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم the best of generation is my generation then the following one then the, the following one so always when there's an argument or dispute take it back to the righteous Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum and those who follow them in righteousness. Al-Qurtubi rahmatullahi alayhi has said these verses, the verses that I'm going to recite insha'Allah which is الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ الرِّبَا لَا يَقُومُونَ إِلَّا كَمَا يَقُومُ الَّذِي يَتَخَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسِ يَتَخَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسِ Al-Qurtubi Rahmatullahi Alayhi has said these verses contains proof of the incorrectness of those who deny possession by way of the jinn claiming that this is the result of a natural causes as well as those who claim that shaitan Satan does not enter humans or does, her, does not touch them this is whom Al-Qurtubi and Al-Tabari said similar things he said mind you you'll find this in volume 3 page 355 Al-Tabari rahmatullahi alayhi has said also he whom we have so described in this life will rise up in the next life from his grave like one stumbling from shaitan's touch 
Now let us look at a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Sahabi, his name is Ya'la ibn Murrah radiyallahu ta'ala an. He said, I was on a journey with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on the way, a woman came to the Prophet, peace be upon him. And she said to him, that this boy, this little boy that she's got, her son, afflicted with a trial. And from him we have also been afflicted with a trial. I do not know how many times per day he is seized by fits. He said, give him to me, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. So the Prophet ﷺ took that young boy, he opened his mouth, he spat inside the mouth of that young boy, and he said, Bismillah, ana Abdullah, ya Allah, al ubudiyya ya akhwan. Bismillah, ana Abdullah, ukhraj ya aduwa Allah. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ has said, in the name of Allah, because the Prophet ﷺ, he is like us. He can't blink an eye, nor do anything without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. He said, in the name of Allah, I am the slave. He was honored to say that I am the slave of Allah. He said, Ukhraj ya adu Allah, leave all you the enemy of Allah. That's what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. And he said to this woman, we are going to go on a journey. And when we do come back, we would like to see you here. And when the Prophet, peace be upon him, went on a journey and came back, she said, by he who has sent you with the truth, nothing has happened to him since. This hadith is found in Rawahu Ahmad and Al-Hakim and Al-Tahawi. And also, an Abi Hassan Al-Ash'ari fi al-Ibana, yaqul, مقالات أهل السنة والجماعة أنهم يقولون إن الجن تدخل في بدن المصروع. One of the greatest scholars, may Allah have mercy on him, Abi Hassan Al Ashari has said, the sayings of the people of Sunnah. This is an agreement. It is consensus. This is the saying that they believe that the jinn enters inside a body. Also, among the many statements from classical scholars confirming the reality of possession is that Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi, he said, his son came up to him and he said, he asked him that there are some people who claim that the jinn cannot enter the body of a human being. Ahmad ibn Hanbal, one of the greatest scholars, may Allah have mercy on him, has said, he said, he replied, Oh my dear son, they are lying. For that is on jinni speaking with his tongue. So whomever said, and they have knowledge, and they claim that the jinn, the spirit, does not enter inside a body, know that when this person is speaking, the shaitan is speaking through his mouth. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi has said, expressed, the position of the majority of scholars stating the existence of the jinn is an establishment, established fact. According to the book, the Quran, and the Sunnah, and the agreement of the early scholars, likewise the penetration of a jinn into a human body is also an established fact according to the consensus of leading scholars. It is also a fact witnessed and experienced by anyone who reflects on it. The jinn enters the one seized by fits and causes him or her to speak incomprehensible words unknowing to himself. If he or she once seized by fits is struck a blow sufficient to kill a camel, they don't feel it. Wallahi al-Azim, I have seen this in my own eyes. Once I went to a mosque, I've made an appointment with a brother. This brother, may Allah forgive him, had a girlfriend. She was Jewish. His father rang me and told me there's something wrong with my son. Could you please see him? So we went inside the mosque. 
And when I came, I've realized that there was a girl inside the car. When I walked inside the mosque, I said, and it was obviously about 10 o'clock at night. I said, who is that girl inside the car? The brother said, she's my girlfriend. I said, bring her in. She went inside the mosque. She put the hijab. And I started to recite Quran on him. Once I started to recite Al Quran on him, his body started to shake. He started to speak in Hebrew. And he's his wife sitting down. She's shocked and she's amazed. She knows him well. She's been with him for three years. And she never heard him say a word of Hebrew. The spirit that was in him was a Jew. And the person who did that magic was her family because they did not want him. Anyway, there are things that I can't tell you, but inshallah, I did use a type of force that if someone was to do what I've done to that person, if someone did what I've done to this person, to me, I can assure you I'll be crying for days. I've hit that person on his feet as I said, if someone was to hit me the same way I'd hit him, I would not walk probably for a week or two. He did not feel a thing. Subhanallah al -Azim. So, this is a reality that we must face. And we must believe in. And inshallah, in time I will give you other examples that did take place. A person who's had a curse on them or they've been bewitched, could die. It all depends on the magic that has been done to them. Al Shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi and Ahmad bin Hanbal, they've said the position that they have is a person who does a certain magic, whether it's by smoke or by something that you drink or eat or by something that you wear, it will affect you. And Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi has said, no, it doesn't have to. A magic can be done with, it, with you being in another country or in another area. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said this in Al-Quran. يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ They cause separation between man and his wife. Man and his wife. And you will find the majority of time, that magic which is done, unfortunately, you will find to divide the man and woman. There's a lot of enviness out there. So a person would go to this magician and would say that I want to, them to be divided, this husband and wife. And this magician, he will create or prepare a certain formula whether it's by something that whether it's by something a person will drink or something that they will wear or by taking a hair of their body any of that magic can be done through it and you will find these magicians and fortune tellers the first thing that they will ask of you is your mother's surname and this is a fact. And once the shaitan waits for that opportunity to er enter inside the body and it takes him a while. And they wait for these three opportunities. Extreme anger. Extreme anger. And when a person has a great temptation and desire And وَلَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ Also, when a person becomes insane, this is an opportunity for the jinn to enter inside the body. Now, if this magic has been done on the male or the female, to break up, suddenly he or she will dislike their partner. She sees him or he sees her as an evil person in front of them. When he's around her, he dislikes her. He can't wait to leave that house. And this is, I'm talking about 
two different personalities. You would know if a person has had magic by having two split personalities. One minute they are calm and the next minute they can hate that person so much. Also some of the symptoms that you'll find with a person that has been possessed is seeing bad dreams during the night. Spiders, snakes, fire, seeing themselves falling from high places. And it all depends on the actual magic. It could be done for many reasons. It could be done for, for example, for a sister that whenever she sees someone who proposes for her, asks for her hand, for marriage, she would dislike him. This does happen. And sometimes you will find that couple can't have children because of magic. Because the Satan goes inside the body and they run with the blood. And for those people who have had magic, you will find that they feel something running up and down. And one of the questions that I usually ask those people is, do you feel extreme numbness in your fingertips and your feet? Extreme pain in the stomach? Migraines? Lower back pains? They are the symptoms that you'll find. Lack of sleep? Extreme anger? Extreme anger to an extent where a person, if a person was to tell you, listen, you've just broke someone's nose, or you've, you know, you did certain things, a certain action that you can't recall, this is also a sign of a person that is possessed or has got magic. You hear things, you feel the presence of things, you hear voices do something to yourself or whatever. And alhamdulillah, this is all by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That in Melbourne, I used to visit the psychiatric hospitals. And alhamdulillah, three Muslims that, you, that have been going there for almost eight years or so. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, He has given them a cure. Utilizing the Quran, insha'Allah. Make, making sure that they read the Quran, implement what is inside the Quran. And I was there to help them by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, many of us read the Quran and not understand it. And that's one of the problems why we seem to not concentrate. And to feel like our faith is not strengthening. Because we don't understand what we read. When a person recites this, they are seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuge from the evil shaitan from the shaitan that وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ the shaitan which is used to blow the nuts and we need to realize that for a magician to be a magician they will have to do a lot of things which are forbidden a lot of kufr acts you see who helps the magician are the shayateen, satans. So this person would have to pray to them, sacrifice for them, go inside the toilets with the Quran in their, while well, they put the Quran in their private parts. They will do all these miserable things. They are the worst of people. They are the worst of people. For that reason, Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi and Malik and Ahmad ibn Hanbal has said to kill the magician. And at the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he killed the three magicians because they tear families apart. They destroy people. But unfortunately, brothers and sisters, today they are respected amongst the community. If you were to open up any newspaper today, whether it's local, state, wherever you are, you will find these people, so-called righteous people, healers, these people are dangerous. And they claim 
that they can give a cure. Once I was at a place which I've been called in an area called Coburg in Melbourne. And I was called, but at the same time there was a magician there. So I went there and I've seen him. He has already arrived. And there were, there were actually Christians, the people who've called me. Christian Lebanese. So I went inside and I've seen this magician. And there's about seven, eight people sitting around this woman holding her while her body is shaken. She had to have seven people to hold her. That's how strong the spirit that was inside of her body. And this lying magician, he has took $3,000 from her. And he was giving her a drink, which is the color of a blood, and it could be blood. And this magician, he, he claims that he's a Muslim. And he had an open, an old book that he was reciting from. So, I was there for a period of time and I said to the people, listen, allow me to read for half an hour and I have to go. So they said, okay. So I said to those people who are holding this woman, I said, leave her alone. So she sat beside me and I put a pillow on top of her head and I started to recite Al-Quran. In the meantime, there was a bit of confrontation between me and that magician. That magician was calling spirit to come inside of her body and to kick out the spirit which is in her. And I said to the people that there was about 20 people present. I said, this person is a magician and he's a liar. And that's what he's doing at the moment. That is what he's doing at the moment. So this magician said to me, I will blind you now. I said, do it. But I said to him, Inna Allah yudafi ani ladhina amanu. Allah protects those who believe. So when I started to recite the Quran on her, she started to shake. So I grabbed the belt and I hit her on her feet for about five minutes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after these five minutes, has given her a cure. She looked at me like this and she said, Who are you? What are you doing here? She was unconscious right through the ordeal. Wallahi al-Azim. And the people ran to me. They said, You gave her the cure. I said, No. I said, No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who gives cure. Not me or Muhammad sallallahu all the shaykhs around the world, if they were to get together, they will not be able to give anyone a cure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, He's the one who gives the cure. And there are people at the moment, unfortunately, that are using this as business. You will find in many of these newspapers that these people will claim that they know the unknown. If you were to pay 30 or 40 dollars, they will let you know that what's going to happen to you in the future. Subhanallah. And what surprises me is many Muslims believe in this. Many Muslims believe in fortune tellers. Have we not heard what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said? Have we not heard? مَنْ أَتَى كَاهِنًا أَوْ عَرَّافًا فَصَدَّقَهُ بِمَا يَقُولْ فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ have we not heard the Prophet ﷺ when he said, whomever comes to a magician or a fortune teller and they believe in what they say, they have disbelieved on what was revealed to Muhammad ﷺ, which is Al-Quran, which is Jibreel ﷺ. Have we not heard? How can you believe these magicians? How can you believe these fortune tellers? How could they sit with you for an hour and take you $40? If they knew the unknown, why wouldn't they go and fill up a that slaughter number and win win few million dollars? Why? And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, لو كنت أعلم الغيب لاستكثرت من الخير وما مسني السوء. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, and if I knew the unknown, I would have an abundance of good, and no harm would have affected me 
لا يعلم غيب السماوات والأرض إلا الله. None knows the unknown in the heavens and the earth except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whomever comes up to you and tells you that this is going to happen tomorrow or whatever, know that they are lying. And they are not worthy of listening to. We find unfortunately today that many Muslims, they indulge... They go out there and they get some, this so-called good luck charm, believing that it will protect them from the eye or from shaitan. Have we not heard Muhammad which he said, Man faqad ashrak. Whomever hangs anything and they believe that this will protect them, they have made shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you hang this kharz zarqa this so-called blue eye things that people have, or when ayyadu billah, some called, and you'll find this in many Muslim countries, a book which is called Al-Hasn al hasin which one of the brothers, may Allah reward, has given me now. This book you will find the majority of Muslims have, and I've seen it being sold in some Islamic countries, probably not knowing or not, you know, realizing the danger of this book. First of all, unfortunately, the page that I want is not here, but this is the first page that you'll find on your left hand side. Has anyone got one of these books? Al Hasn al Hasin. Anyone's got one of those? Can you please give it to me if you have? I'd appreciate it. No. Okay. The first page on your left hand side. Alhamdulillah. The first page that you will find on the left hand side of that book. It has four satanic names. The first page on your left hand side. It's got Kamdham, Kaswara, Tail, and Afil. This is the first page on your left hand side and you will see a formula of magic numbers. Now on the right hand side it says here It's not the book that I want. The book says and as I said this is the most held book by the Muslims. Many Muslims have that book. Okay? And it says, حَدَّثَنَا بَعْضِ الْعَارِفِينَ A person has informed us, a person that who knows, that whomever carries this book, if they are poor, they become rich. If they are sick, they become cured. If they are in prison, they will be free. They will enter the doors of the kings. Whomever carries it. Who has informed them? A person that, who, that they claim that he knows. You see, and also you will find in the book, which is called Al-Hasn al hasin you will find that there are some Qur'an chapters so they can fool Muslims. So they can fool Muslims. I have also something that I've picked up from a sister that was sick the other day, which said, وَلَيَّذُ بِاللَّهِ other satanic names you will find yeah I think that's the book can I have it please Zakallah Zakallah this is the book you will find it in the majority of Muslims homes I don't know if the brothers or sisters can see it from here there are numbers on this side and on each corner you will find these things and you will find on the right hand side, as I was saying previously. طيب. يقول فقد استخرت الله سبحانه وتعالى وجمعت هذا الحصن الحصين من كتاب رب العالمين وهو حرز نافع إن شاء الله تعالى لكل خص لكل شيء خصوصا من الأمراض التي تحصل لبني آدم وبنات حواء دخول على 
على الملوك وأرباب الأقلام والمجبة والقبول ونافع للسفر وكيد الفجار وتبطل السحر ونافع من لدغة العقرب والحية والثعبان لأنه قد حدثنا بعض العارفين That's the person here that says one person told us and informed us that whomever carries this book it will be beneficial for all those things that I've mentioned before لأنه قد حدثنا بعض العارفين عن جده that his grandfather has told him أن هذا الدعاء ما حمله معسر إلا يسره الله his, his grandfather has told him whomever carries this supplication, this book whatever difficulties that they're going through they will have peace and ease إلا يسر الله رزقه ولا خائف إلا أمنا ولا مريد إلا شفيا ولا مديون إلا قضى الله دينه ولا مسجون إلا فك من سجنه ولا مهموم ومغموم ومكروب إلا انصرف عن كربه So his grandfather told this person whomever carries this book if they are going through difficulties in provision things will become easier and whomever is frightened they will become they will have that sense of security and whomever is sick they will be cured and whomever has taken a loan they will be able to pay it back and whomever is in prison they will be released this is shirk if you believe in this that if you were to carry this and this will protect you and this will give you the cure and this will make you rich you are committing the same thing as the Christians are doing with Jesus peace be upon him and as the disbelievers those who believe in the statues and idols this is forbidden and I have another piece of paper that I took out of a sister the other day that says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما شاء الله نلوش ليوش عيوش مردوش فتوش قردوش حشوش لاحوش دروش أم الصبيان لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم I know that there are many sisters out there that have similar things rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need, we need to put our trust and confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أذهب البأس رب الناس واشفي أنت الشافي. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu used to say, أذهب البأس رب الناس. Oh Allah, the Lord of mankind, remove the pain. واشفي أنت الشافي. Give the cure. None can give the cure except for you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا شفاء إلا شفاء. There is no cure but your cure. We need to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In none of this. In none of this. Wallahi al-Azim, brothers and sisters, the biggest enemy that the Muslims face today is ignorance. Lack of knowledge. You see, we are expert in everything almost. But when it comes to the religion, the majority of us don't know how to pray or make wudu or whatever. Whomever comes who looks like me, long beard, mashallah, he's got long abaya, anything that this person says, you believe without questioning, without confirming that this person, whatever he's saying, it is from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu For that reason, the Muslim Ummah today is in this situation. People would say, don't talk bad about this person. He knows the unknown. Subhanallah al-Azim. There was a person in Lebanon that people used to go to his grave and they used to seek assistance from him. And they used to slaughter for him and they used to donate. But that grave was in the middle of the road. And they had to make that road. But people used to say, if anyone was to touch this grave, they will be harmed, them and their family. So one of the shaykhs who alhamdulillah feed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he had full trust and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said I will demolish that grave. So the shaykh decided to get an axe and start to demolish this grave. He found an ID identification card for that person. He was a uh, a Greek person, a Greek hunter, who landed in Lebanon and the people said, well, why don't we bury him here? 
So the problem is they were seeking help and assistance from a dead person. And they thought he's a wali. He's a person who is righteous. And they interceded through him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they found out that he's a Greek person, he's not a Muslim. And these people have been fooled. Ignorance is a major problem. We need to realize this. We need to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be dependent on Allah in everything. And one of the reasons why the Muslims today are in this situation because they put their trust in someone else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we not know when a person leaves their house they make full insurance with Allah? A person asks me, is insurance permissible Abu Hamza? I would say yes, of course. When you leave the house you say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. When you leave the house, you say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, I depend on Allah, I put my trust in Allah, la hawla. There is no might or power except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, when a person makes dua, this dua in the morning, the shaitan who is waiting for him outside or waiting for her would say, I have no, no chance of, ha ha of having any effect or influ influence on that person. Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we need to do. And unfortunately, we seem to put the Quran in many houses today. You'll find, mashaAllah, you would go to you know, one of the brother's house or one of the sister's house and you'll find, mashallah, they've got about six, seven Qur'ans or sometimes ten and fifteen. And they all look neat, mashallah. Because none of them have been opened. <laughs> this Qur'an, brothers and sisters, is to be opened and to recite and to implement. You see, in my country, Lebanon, see, I can mention my country, but I won't mention someone else's country. When a person recites the Qur'an, or a person puts a, a tape to listen to the Qur'an, people would knock on the door and say, Khair, inshallah, someone has died? The Qur'an has become, unfortunately, it, ain't, it has been used only for the dead. هذا القرآن حفظكم الله لينذر من كان حيا This Qur'an, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, it is to warn those who are alive, not those who are dead. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ We descend what is in the Qur'an, which is shifa, cure, and merciful to those who believe. In another verse, قُلْ هُوَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا هُدًا وَشِفَاءٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Al-Qur'an, say, O Muhammad, to the people, say to them, it is... Hudan, it is guidance. This Quran, this miracle that is left on the face of the earth today is the last miracle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has challenged those who disbelieve at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make like the Quran. A Quran or ten surah or even one surah and they weren't able and this challenge remains till the day of judgment this is the miracle that is left on the face of the earth today Al-Quran it is guidance and a cure to mankind Wallahi Azim I have read on people who are disbelievers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them a cure once I read on a person who's from Yugoslav and I started to recite the Quran and he became unconscious so I read on a bit of water and I've opened up his mouth and as soon as I put a bit of water in his mouth he started to shiver and his mouth went, started to go up and down like this in an extreme speed, I've never seen it like this and there was no one else besides me and him so Alhamdulillah this is an advantage so I got up grabbed the belt and started to lay into him <laughs> Wallahi al-Azim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after about 15 minutes of belting the hell out of him 
on his feet. Wallahi al-Azim, Wallahi al-Azim. He became conscious and he said, what happened? He is not aware. He is not aware of what happened. You see, I've been reading on people who've been possessed for about eight years. The first year that I began, even though that I was learning prior to that, I was watching some of the brothers who've got some expertise in this. The first year that I began, one of the brothers that I used to teach, he said that his sister is sick. And whenever she puts the hijab on, she dislikes it. Can I come to their house and read the Quran? So I went. This is my first time and I was by myself. So I started to read on this sister. Suddenly the mother was beside her. She started to shake. And no brothers and sisters, if you, these, this is one of the symptoms that proves that you are possessed or you have someone has put a magic on you. Is when you listen to the Quran, you become cranky and upset and frustrated. And you have problems sleeping. Especially after Maghrib until Fajr. This is the time that you find difficulties in sleeping. So, I started to recite the Quran and the mother was on the left hand side. And she started to shake angrily like this. And I found out that the mother is possessed. I started to read on the mother. I looked behind me. One of the brother's brothers, he said, there's, some, there's something in my hand and he started to shake like this. Wallahi al-Azim. After three weeks of reading on these people, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them both cure. It is all mercy from Allah. Through the Quran. The Quran. This miracle that many of us have neglected and they have left aside. We need to understand this. This is a cure. This is medication, Al-Quran. And we should not utilize it for the wrong reason. And just decorate it. The Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has favored us with to implement and to recite. And also, we need to realize that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, إِنَّ الرُّقَ وَالتَّمَائِمْ وَالتَّوْلَةَ الشِّرْكِ رَوَاهُ أَحْمَدُ وَأَبُ دَاوُدُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that a ruqa You see, if you want to find that a person is doing the right thing, if you have been possessed or someone has put a spell or whatever, make sure that this person has these features. First of all, if he was to say to you that I'm coming, especially to a sister, make sure that he asks you, is your husband there, your brother, your uncle, your grandfather. If he was to say, yes, I would come, and there is no one else besides you and him, know that this person is evil. There are two people in Melbourne, they have been jailed, alhamdulillah. And I will mention their name because I, fear, I don't fear them. And there are a few here at the moment that I'm trying to get their name. One of them came to Melbourne recently. He took $9,000 of his sister. Okay? You know, saying that he will bring her husband back to her. So he rang her husband and he said, please just come back with her just for one night. Anyway, these two evil people, one of them, his name is Umar Sharif, and he ain't no Sharif. He's no Sharif. He's a, a Nusayri, he's Alawi. That person, women used to come from all around Australia to him. And they used to line up. And Billah, he has committed adultery with many of the sisters. And mashallah, you'll find some of the brothers, you know, coming with their wives or their sisters. And the person would say, wait outside. He would say, okay, not a problem. And he will get her inside. And when Ayyad Billah, he does evil things. Even though that he deals with spirits, evil spirits, that will go inside of her body and she will become, she will become unconscious. She's not aware of what he's doing. But when she would get up from this ordeal, she would feel that something has happened. So that clown has been jailed, alhamdulillah, in Melbourne. And also there's, there are a few. A'udhu billahi min ghadabillah. So make sure that person, he fears Allah. And they only recite Al-Quran. And they read some of the dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Make sure they read loudly because they could be calling spirits. 
and also make sure that they the dua that they can make is a dua that is permissible because the prophet sallallahu has said la ba'as birruqa ma lam takun shirka there is nothing wrong with reading on a person who is sick as long as there is no shirk in it so a person can say nas'alullah azza wa jal an yashfiha wa yab'ad anha shayateen al-ins wal jin you know you can make a dua that you can whatever dua that you want to as long as you are not making shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's an incident that happened that one of the sisters came from Sydney to Melbourne and subhanallah al-azim this is something that really you know opened my eyes and it had a lot of effect on me when she was here they took her to the hospital because she was running after her little daughter she wanted to kill her suddenly she dislikes her husband so they took her to a doctor they've examined her and everything else and they found that there's nothing wrong with her so they brought her to Melbourne and I was called to go there and I was with another brother then before I walked in this sister has said to her family that this person by name is coming in and this person by name is coming in Wallahi Al-Azim she knew who is going to come to that house because the spirits are like us as I inform you they inform one another so we went inside that house and we said to the sister please put on the hijab please put on head cover head scarf and she said I don't want to in this tone of language so I said okay in these circumstances she's sick let her go so I started to recite Al-Quran on her and by Allah what I'm saying is the truth after half an hour the body started to shake so I said Bismillah in the name of Allah who is with me and her family is sitting down around her a male voice came out from her voice saying my name is Stephen I said what are you doing here he said I have come here to make sure that she hates her husband and dislikes her child so I started to speak to this jinn for about half an hour about Islam and by Allah who has created me and you he said I want to embrace Islam then I decided to ask him what name he would like to choose and he said to me you choose a name for me so I've called him Umar radiallahu ta'ala an so those people who dislike Umar can keep away from him radiallahu ta'ala an and then she's still being affected by this so I read again again the body shook and I told him to leave and he left and they usually leave through the feet or through the hands and again this is something as you have you know people who are expert in, in certain things also when a person needs if they want to recite on people who've been possessed they need to also be experts because they could be harmed or their family because the shayateen they're like us you harm me I am going to harm you if you hit my child I'm going to send an army to hit you or whatever they have the same mentality and they will take revenge so those people who read they have to make sure that the dua the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always on their tongue and they're always making the dua that the Prophet sallallahu used to use and making sure that their children and their families do the same thing so after a period of time I started to recite again and I said in the name of Allah who is with me he said my name is Stefan I said Stefan what are you doing here he said I have come to the same reason I said you heard what I said to Umar do you, do you like me to talk about Islam he said I hate Islam I dislike Islam I said this is up to you but I ask you in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave this body Wallahi al-Azim we all cried in that room as soon as this evil spirit left the body this sister of ours ran to her daughter and she started to cry and hug her daughter 
And alhamdulillah their lives have been wonderful after that. So that there are evil people out there that enjoy when people have been harmed we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from all evil and we ask Allah the Almighty to strengthen our faith and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us knowledge in his religion so we don't get fooled like many people have been fooled and they have paid thousands and thousands of dollars to these evil magicians who only deserve to be killed Muslims should be aware and they should not fall for this trap أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وجزاكم الله خير وبارك الله فيك بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق محمد بن عبد الله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد. We begin with the first question. Brother, I am a mother of two. I revert to Islam for the last 12 years. Glad tidings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you paradise. But for the last four years I have experienced these symptoms you speak of. Numbness in my hands, waking up for long period between I am till 4, 4 a.m. Also severe back pain, and I seem to be constantly in mood swings. When I hear Quran, my ears start to hum. Please, brother, can you help? As I said, first of all, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen you. For you reverts, I do have to admit, when you embrace Islam, you're going to face a lot of difficulties. Shaitan dislikes when you leave or abandon false, well, you abandoned your old religion, which you used to associate someone with God, and to believe in one God. The shaitan dislikes this. And I know a sister that I was informed in Melbourne when she was not a Muslim, she didn't have any problems. She did not have any problems with jinn. Once she embraced Islam, she had a lot of difficulties. The jinn constantly bothered her. I would like to say to you, first of all, sister, this pain that you're going through, you will get rewarded for it. And we as Muslims, we are going to face trials, different trials. And you are going through this at the moment. There is a cure to this, inshallah. Be constant, be firm. At the moment, there is a challenge between us and shaitan. And remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, إِنَّ عِبَادِي لَيْسَ لَكَ عَلَيْهِمْ سُلْطَانِ إِلَّا مَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْغَاوِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to the shaitan that my slaves, you have no authority over them except for those who follow you. So we need to understand this. And we need to be committed and to persevere, not to give up. Insha'Allah, maybe my next trip, I would come if you have your brother or whomever in cases where you don't have anyone will bring a brother and you bring a sister and inshallah would read Al-Quran the question I'm sure it will arise what is the surahs that a person is supposed to recite when they are possessed or they've got magic see as we are brothers and sisters sometimes we, we recite certain verses of Al-Quran and we get affected by it and sometimes we recite other verses and nothing happens to us the same thing with the jinn and the shayateen sometimes you'd read something and nothing will happen 
I remember a sister that I was reading in uh, reading on in Melbourne and subhanallah I'd read on her suddenly she'll cry and the other time she would be pulling her tongue out and, and spitting and stuff like this so when she was crying I said what is your name? and the uh, jinn responded by a voice from a female saying my name is Ibrahim I said what are you doing here? you're a Muslim he said, yes, I have been sent by this magician. I said, are you here alone? Because I was confused. Why suddenly he would cry and then the other time he would you know, make fun of me and, and do all these things. So he said, there are two Christians inside this body. I said, you're a Muslim. How can you harm your sister or harm any others? Regardless whether they're Muslims or not Muslims. It is forbidden for us to harm non-Muslims. How can you do this? How can you assist, assist the non-Muslims to harm your sister? And he started to cry and cry. I said, leave in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I started to recite Ayatul Kursi. And this will keep the other evil spirits away from him. And alhamdulillah he left. And after about three months of constant reading, the other two spirits have left. So I ask you to be persistent. Read the Quran. Read what the Prophet Muhammad has said, and this is an advice to each one of you, after Maghrib and after Fajr, remember this dua, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk, wa lahu al-hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. The Prophet has said, whomever recites this dua, after Fajr, he will be protected from after Fajr until Maghrib. And if they were to recite it after Maghrib, they will be protected from after Maghrib until Fajr. This is a protection that many of us don't know. Islam has given us arms. If I was to tell you there's an enemy coming behind this wall, would you not grab a knife or a baseball bat or a gun to defend yourself? We also need to defend ourselves from these evil spirits. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet peace be upon him, he himself was possessed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm sorry, he was himself, someone has put a spell on him, Labib, one of the Jews have done magic on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some people don't believe this, it did happen. And it is a mercy from Allah that this did happen. Because how would we know how to react? The Prophet ﷺ became unconscious. He was not aware if he did certain things or not. He started to imagine things. So the two angels descended and they started to recite Kul a'udhu bi rabbil nas and Kul a'udhu bi rabbil falak. And now we know that if a person is possessed, these two surahs are essential when someone is possessed. It is a mercy from Allah. The Prophet ﷺ got sick. The Prophet ﷺ got beaten. The Prophet ﷺ was abused. So what do we do, brothers and sisters? We look at how the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ responded to these people and we respond the same way if we honestly love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the question. Can you please explain what is riba? Riba is usury. Riba is interest. Riba is when a person takes a loan from a bank, they take $5,000 and they end up paying $5,000, $500 or $6,000 or whatever. Or you give someone a substantial amount of money and you ask them to give you a little bit more on top. This is usury and it is forbidden. Okay? But it is permissible for a Muslim, for example, if a person has a certain trade and I would say to him, okay brother, I'll give you $5,000. And the person is a mechanic or a panel beater or a butcher or whatever. And I'd say to him, listen, the profit that you make, I want 30% or 40% or 50%. It all depends on the agreement. I want profit and at the same time a loss. If Qaddar Allah, if this person, he's, you know, his business went badly unfortunately. Huh? And he lost a lot of money or something happened. I lose and he loses. Why should I gain when he makes a profit and he should... He alone should make a loss. Islam is fair and Islam is just. For that reason, it is haram in Islam. What is the strongest verses we can use from the Quran? First of all, Surah Al-Baqarah. 
and I advise you to make sure that you hear it, if you can't read it, at least once a month. The Prophet Muhammad has said, whomever recites Surah Al-Baqarah once a month, the shaitan will keep away from that house. I advise you also to, when it's time to pray, to make adhan. Because the Prophet Muhammad has said, when the adhan is made, shaitan will flee away. Subhanallah, I was reading on a sister in Lebanon. Jazakallah khair. Allah reward you. I was reading on a sister in Lebanon and she was possessed. And whenever the adhan was made, she would say, Abu Hamza, look at them. She would see thousands of shayateen leaving, fleeing away. Wallahi al-Azim. Obviously, I could not see them. Anyway, as I said, Surah Al-Baqarah. Al-Adhan, Surah Al-Jinn, Al-Ma'udhatayn, Surah Al-Safat, Surah Al-Jinn, Surah Al-A'raf, and many others. It all depends, as I said, on the jinn. You see, when we read on people that have been possessed, we can feel the things that harms them. The things that harm them, we repeat it again, repeat it again. Because there's difference between possession and magic. Can you kill a magician if you see him or her? MashaAllah. No, you can't kill them. When there is an Islamic government, the Islamic government will kill them. But you have no right, for example, if you to see uh, at the moment a brother or, and a sister commit adultery, okay, and they are married, you would say, I'll have to take him to the city square and stone him to death amongst the people. You can't do that. Or if you were to know that someone steals, you say, I have to chop your hand off. No, this is not the case. The people who are in authority, the government, will do this. But we should make people aware of these filthy people. And we should announce their names. And we should not be frightened. Because if we show fear for these people, that shows that we have lack, lack of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who is possessed and commits kufr while possessed, are they accountable for these actions? No, they are not. If a person is possessed by a spirit and they are unconscious, they are not aware, they will not be held accountable. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah khair for your talk. Brother, I will just like to know if you were scared on the first time. You got the jinn out of the person. Please listen to what you've written. I did not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I was the means, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone gave the cure, not me. I've just recited what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has descended on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last miracle, which is Al-Quran. I can't do anything without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Okay, so you got to understand this. This is Tawheed. This is the oneness of Allah. If a person believes that someone else gives the cure, for example, at the moment you go to a doctor, or two people who are the same age, they have the same disease or sickness. And they both go to a doctor. And the doctor would give each one a certain medication. One person is cured, one person can become cured and the, the other person could not. So you take the medication and you rely on Allah. Or both of them can become cured. Or both of them can remain sick. It is up to Allah. So we take the means... We take the medication, then we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is important. We don't say, well, I don't need to go to a doctor or whatever. No, go to a doctor. Take medication, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for shifa. And mind you, the medication that you are taking, it is from Allah. Where are they getting these substances from? It is all from the land that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Question. With position, do the jinn just possess anyone okay and he's talking about a practicing Muslim a shaitan fears those who fear Allah you see brothers and sisters you either fear Allah or you fear others the more you fear Allah the more others will fear you whether mankind or evil spirits you see for that reason Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu goes in one way, the shayateen al-insi wal jinn, they go to the other way. Umar ibn al-Khattab, 
that man who used to oppress the Muslims, harm the Muslims. But when he embraced Islam, and when he knew that his status and position is high by him embracing Islam, and he said, نحن قوم أعزنا الله بالإسلام من اتخذ العزة بغير الإسلام أذله الله and he said, we are people that Islam has given us honor and position. And whoever takes honor and position with something else besides Islam, Allah will humiliate them. If you take your position and if you become proud because you, are, you belong to a certain sect or a certain group or a certain whatever, or you belong to a certain country or you are a doctor or whatever, you will be humiliated. You should be proud that you are a Muslim. And that person, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, he's an amazing man. And allow me to get off the topic just slightly. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, once saw a woman, her name is Ummu Jamil radiallahu ta'ala anha. She wanted to escape from Mecca because of the torture that they were getting from the disbelievers. And at that time, Umar was a kafir, he was a non-Muslim radiallahu ta'ala an. So he saw her, Umar. He said, Umm Jamil, where are you going? She said, leave us alone. Leave us alone. We are not harming you. We want to flee away from this misery that we're in. He said to her, may Allah be with you. Because they used to believe in God, but they used to associate others with God. Like once, he was smiling, and the other time he would be weeping. And he was asked, why are you smiling? And suddenly you are crying. He said, I remembered that once I was in the desert on a journey. And I've made my God from dates. So I got hungry, so I ate my God. He was laughing at how ignorant they were. And they said to him, then why were you crying? He said, I was crying that he buried his daughter, daughter while she was alive. This is the ignorant, this is the pre-Islamic period. When Umm Jamil met her son behind that mountain and he said to her, Did anyone see you? She said, Umar. He said, Umar? Radiallahu ta'ala. He said to her, Out of all people, Umar? And what did he say to you? She said to him, May Allah be with you. He looked at her and said, You're not thinking that Umar will embrace Islam? The donkey of Umar might say the shahada, but he won't. The donkey, impossible. He said to her, the donkey of Umar might say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, but Umar won't. Brothers and sisters, I want you, especially for those brothers and sisters who give da'wah, I want you to put the saying of this man in front of you. They used to think, the last person that will embrace Islam is Umar. His donkey might say the shahada, but he won't. So when you confront people out there on the street, regardless how they look, Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them. Preach to them about Islam. Remember the Sahaba were kuffar. They were kafir and they've embraced Islam. And Islam today is the fastest growing religion in the world today. Even though that the media are propagating that the Muslims are, are extremists, fundamentalist terrorists. But the people see the truth. If we have 2% what the media has at the moment, for us to propagate Islam, I can assure you, these non-Muslims will embrace Islam into, in groups, inshallah. I am from a family that has a lot of these cursing going on. Most of them are to break up marriages. Is there any hadith or sunnah that we can say or read to stop these from happening because I am thinking about getting married and don't want this to happen to me. Well, the question, I don't know if they are doing it. A member of the family is, you know, a member of the family is doing this or someone is doing it to them. If it is a member of the family, tell them to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a major sin. And if it's someone else, also what you need to do is first of all advise them. If they don't accept, inform people about them or send the shaykh to speak to them. Maybe they are ignorant. 
That's what you can do. Question. There is a guy overseas in Lebanon who doesn't tell you of the unseen, but advises you on what to do in regards of getting married, buying a house or a shop. Well, you can go to a consultant and he will tell you the same thing. There is nothing wrong with that. If you come up to someone, he would say, you know, should I get married to this sister? And I always get asked that question because I know a lot of the brothers and sisters and if I was to know her, I would say yes. And I know that she's trustworthy and honest and vice versa to the brothers, I would say yes. And uh, in, in this case, brothers and sisters, it is permissible to backbite. If someone was to come up to me, a sister, and you know, she was to come up to me and to say to me, what do you think of that brother? I'm thinking of getting married. And I know that this brother, he's abusive, he's violent. In this permissible, it is permissible for me, in this case, it is permissible for me to say that he's not a good person, he lies, he cheats, he abuses, or whatever. Okay? So in this case, it is permissible. What is this like? It is right as I spoke to this man, and yeah, he seemed pretty righteous. If he's righteous, inshallah, and as I said, the conditions that he recites the Quran or the Hadith openly or the Dua, okay, and they don't, you know, uh, say it secretly. Is it allowed to write Quranic verses on a paper and hang it around little children's neck as they can recite them? Yes, it is. Listen, listen to your question. Is it permissible to, to do this? Yes, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud did this, radiallahu ta'ala an, where they used to hang a little board on the children so they can memorize it, memorize it, then leave it. Not go to, a'udhu billah, you know, to, as, as many people to, do today. You know, they put it on themselves, they go to the toilet and things like this. No, you are not allowed to do this. And they say, well, it's covered, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You should not go inside the toilets and having verses of the Quran on you. Respect the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not known that the Prophet ever gave anyone a verse of the Quran and told them to put it on them. Because the Quran was in them, not on them. The Quran was an implementation inside their hearts and on their limbs. That's what we need to understand. Okay, I've got a warning five minutes ago. Are we allowed to believe in tafsir, dreams? There are people who are specialized, as Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, there are people who are specialized. But again, if it's a bad dream, don't tell anyone. There are three types of dream. A dream that a person you know, sees if they've done, for example, if they have been hammering all day, they will see themselves hammering during the night. Okay? And also, if they, sometimes th there are dreams from shaitan, where a person would get up, and they're sweating, and they're frightened, and when you would wake them up, you'd say, they would say, Alhamdulillah, you know, that you've woken me up, because they are, you know, uh, frightened from what they've seen. And this type of dream, you should not mention it to anyone. And there's another dream from Ar-Rahman. There's a dream from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A warning dream. Okay, a warning so you can, you know, shape up. So you can come to Allah, you see yourself praying. Or sometimes you see the fire. That is a warning from Allah so you can come back to reality, inshaAllah. I have a very, or fairly good idea that my mother is possessed. She is not a Muslim. If I recite the Quran in her presence, she gets very angry. Is there any other way I can confirm she is possessed without her knowing? Jazakallah. Well, what you can do, see this is, this is a question that I know many of the brothers and sisters will ask. What you can do in this case? For example, a person is not willing to come for the Shaykh to read on. Whomever tells you that they can recite while the other person is on the other side, this is wrong. The person has to be present. The person has to be present for the right ruqya to be done. Okay? Or you can get a tape of Al Quran which is called Al Ruqya Shari'a, and I don't think the brothers have it, but we do have it in Melbourne. If a person you're suspicious that they might have a problem or whatever, if they listen to this, first of all, then give them this tape while they are driving because something might happen. So make sure that they are inside the house and they are listening to this tape. 
which is specialized to those people who've been possessed and those people who've got magic on them. Okay? You can't, for example, a person would come up and say, well, you know, my mother is on the other side of the country or whatever. Can you do something from here? Well, yes, I can make dua. But if a person is possessed or whatever, you need to be present so they can read Quran on you and see exactly how they can deal with you, inshallah. Just like a doctor, exactly like a doctor. You have to come to the doctor so the doctor can see what you are in need for. Can a person uh, use themselves for possession or does it have to be through a Muslim exorcist? Yes, a person can, if they are strong enough, inshallah, and they know how to go about it. Yes, you can read on yourself, inshallah, but sometimes in circumstances where the shayateen, the spirits are very, very strong. And when you read certain verses of the Qur'an, you become unconscious, so you are not aware. Okay? In this case, you'd need a help. And sometimes it's a minor position, so you don't need a help from someone else. Okay, that's the last question, inshallah. What powers, if any, does shaitan have in knowing the unknown? Shaitan reaches the seventh heaven, he is the angel speak. Yes, if you read Surah As-Safat, it will describe exactly what the shaitan does. He hears a word from the angels, what they are talking about. And by the time he, he descends to the land, he mixes, up, he mixes it up with many, many lies. Okay? So we need to understand this. He does not know the unknown. When the angels talk about something, it is not the unknown. Okay? When the angels talk about something, it is not the unknown. The only one who knows the unknown is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever the Prophet, peace be upon him, tells us about what is going to happen to the future, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What am I to do if I see a dream that one of the members of my family dies? As I said, keep it concealed, inshallah, and this is a bad dream, so don't tell people about it. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on that person, inshallah. May Allah reward you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa jazakum Allah khair. I do appreciate the brothers and sisters attending to these lectures, inshallah. This is a start. And we hope, inshallah, that in the future we will continue on doing this, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. And please, if any mistake that, was, that has been mentioned, it is from me. And if any good that has been said, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa astaghfirullah. Wa jazakumullah khair. Wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
And the only time they can seem to get a moment of relief is when they escape into this world of fantasy. Take away their fantasy. Take away their music. Take away their films. Take away their drink. And then you will see how really happy they are. People are like sheep. Just because our predecessors, so-called, believed in a God, convince me with hard evidence, or what hard evidence is there to prove to me that there is a God? Well, this is uh, the type of individual about whom we spoke, who I would ask instead to prove that there isn't a God. Common sense, logic, reason points to God's existence. It is not for me to prove to you that there is a God. It is for you to deny what is obvious around you, to argue that there isn't a God. It's compulsory for Muslims to learn their deen. It's not compulsory for everybody to be an alim or an alima. But it's compulsory for everyone to learn their deen. So if you put priority of a government school over the Islamic school, then that's up to you, but you have to learn your deen. And if your parents have the ability to teach you the Quran and the Sunnah properly while you're going to those government schools, then alhamdulillah, that's good. They'll get a reward. But... You should, if you spend one, one hour on chemistry, you should spend two hours on Quran. If you spend two hours on trigonometry, you should spend four hours on hadith. You should never give that type of education priority over the Islamic education. Because ultimately, the Islamic education is going to be that which saves you. Not knowing what Freud said, not knowing what Machiavelli said, not knowing what Masters and Johnson said, not knowing some kafir that's going to go to hell for not worshiping Allah properly said, you're going to get the reward if you study Islam and inculcate it in your life, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And I remember this parade that they had. We were upstairs in, in Manhattan. And, and a big noise came about. And I, I woke up and I said to the brother, what is going on? Is, is it workers who are demonstrating? Is it the poor people who are marching in the streets? And they said, no. This is Gay Pride Day. I went downstairs. I had my kufi on and I had a long shirt. And I went on the corner and this person came up to us and he said, you're strange. <laughs> I looked at the brother next to me, and then I looked at him. His hair was like a chicken, you know, a rooster. <laughs> like in the middle, he had a chain uh, net shirt on, uh, he had this, these metal chains around his neck, short pants and big boots. <laughs> and then he said to me, you're strange. And I turned to the brother and I said, Sadaqa Rasulullah, Bada al-Islam gariba, wa sayyaudu gariban kama bada, fatuba lil ghuraba. Islam started strange and it will return to being strange. So give glad tidings, give tidings of a tree in Jannah for those who are strange. I'm think I am thinking about corresponding meeting people on the internet. What is your opinion about using email for this purpose? That's a smart one. Maybe you could give me ideas about how to approach this, or are there any brothers available in Toronto? <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, as for the internet, as for the internet, it is something that is haram for you to build relationships. Muslims lie. Okay? He's going to tell you he's a doctor. 
when he's not. He's going to tell you he can put a, mortgage, put a down payment on a house and you won't need a mortgage, and he's lying. They're just there towing with people's emotions. People lie. Don't be naive. Don't think, oh, he's not lying. Down the road you will find that he lied once, twice, three, and many other times. Build a relationship according to, way, to the way of Islam. Have your wali search for other people. Make it known that you are looking. Don't be hidden or shy. Go to the imam and say, Ya imam, if you see people who are good, allow them to know my wali's phone number. Make it known that you are in the market. Make it known. And this is actually a shame that you do not have uh, something that can be of a network for the Muslim brothers and sisters to come together uh, in a permitted halal way. <laughs> وأرض الإباء الباغي عداها حتى دور مدفع الحق قضاء وأرض الإباء الباغي عداها حتى دور مدفع الحق قضاء حي حشودا للرب سجودا حي حشودا للرب سجودا بلادي تنادي للدين فداء فهب الجنود للسيف وفاء بلادي تنادي للدين فداء فهب الجنود للسيف وفاء احمي حدودا